that's just an appetizer, don't worry. <laughs> Folks, I want to welcome you to St. Matthew's. Uh, it's my incredible pleasure to have you with us here on this lovely afternoon. My name is Dominic Moore. I'm the rector here at St. Matthew's. Um, and this has been a long time coming, not just in the kind of immediate ways of the fact that this uh, instrument that we had put in here, uh, we were all ready to set and dedicate right as uh, the coronavirus began to do its thing. Um, and we've waited for this day for now for 18 months, I think at least. Uh, so we're very excited for this day to come. I just want to especially welcome everyone for coming out today, all of you who are uh, members of St. Matthew's, those of you who are visitors, those of you who are members of our extended family. We are so glad to have you with us on this very special day, and uh, thank you for being part of this incredible family, this family of faith, this portion of the body of Christ in this place. Um, first, I just have to say uh, some words of thanksgiving in particular. You know, like all things, this was a project that was a long time coming, and it involved work of many different people. Um, of course, many, many people, more than I could list, but I especially want to thank those who served on our uh, organ committee that uh, researched this, that made it possible, that raised funds for it, that went to bat again and again to make this a reality. And so today, I just want to especially thank Zach Zakowski and Claude Haynes and Ann Cheney and Pat and Wayne Needham, and a very special thanks to Rachel Salemi as well. Um, thank you, please. In addition to those people who worked to make this a reality, there were so many people who gave to make this a reality, gave sacrificially, gave in faith, uh, gave because they wanted to do something for future generations and above all to the glory of God. And of course, that's why we're here. And those names are listed in your bulletin as well. And I want to thank each and every one of you for making that a reality. Um, and so without further ado, you're not here to hear me talk. Many of you are already here this morning to hear me talk. We're going to continue on with our opening hymn and the blessing of this beautiful new instrument. <laughs>
joyful in the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness is from age to age. Please join me in the dedication. We present to you this organ to be set apart for the service of Christ's holy church. All things come from you, O Lord. And from your own gifts do we give to you. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Show your servants your works. And your splendor to their children. Let us pray. Almighty oh God, we thank you that you have put it into the hearts of your people to make offerings for your service and have been pleased to accept their gifts. Be with us now and bless us as we set apart this organ to your praise and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. They sing to the tambourine and the lyre, and rejoice to the sound of the pipes. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with fire and harp. Let us pray. O God, before whose throne trumpets sound, and saints and angels sing the songs of Moses and the Lamb, accept this order for the worship of your temple that with the voice of music we may proclaim your praise and tell it abroad, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we remember before you today your faithful servants, and we pray that having opened to them the gates of larger life, you will receive them more and more into your joyful service, and with all who have faithfully served you in the past, they may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We bless your name, O Lord, because it has pleased you to enable your servants to offer this gift for your worship. Remember them for your good, and grant that all who benefit from this gift may show their thankfulness to you by using it in accordance with your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I'm going to turn this show over to some people who know far more about this than I ever knew or will, Claude Haynes and Mitsumi Moore. Good afternoon. Uh, the term organ crawl is used when exploring a pipe organ, often literally crawling through tight spaces to see the layout of pipes. To spare you that, I want to spend a few moments on the history of our instrument and to give you a brief tour of some of its sounds. On the side of the console is a plaque that recognizes major donors to the project. There's also a full list in your program. All were instrumental in the completion of this project. We are grateful that you are here today to help us celebrate, since you have an important role to play. A church organ is not just a concert instrument, nor is it only an accompaniment for the choir. Its primary role is leading congregational hymns and we are appreciative of your robust singing. Our instrument began its life. It was built by the Reuter Organ Company of Lawrence, Kansas, as their Opus 1297. They've been building pipe organs for over 100 years. The organ began service in the chapel of George Peabody College for Teachers in Nashville. Now in 1981, it was moved and enlarged by the Milner Organ Company and installed in the Turner Recital Hall at the same campus. By that time, the college had merged with Vanderbilt University. I should explain the large Mylar panels, which we chose not to include. <laughs> they were designed to reflect sound to tune the acoustics of the room. Now, I don't know if there was a disco ball in the center of the hall, but it was the 80s. A generous donor provided funds for the purchase of a new tracker organ. And in 2014, our instrument was retired to climate-controlled storage at the Milner Workshop in a suburb of Nashville. 
After thorough cleaning and restoration, our new to us instrument arrived. As you can see, a pipe organ is the ultimate IKEA musical instrument. <laughs> it took a week to install everything and another week to tune and voice the instrument. The heart of the organ is a console, which makes up no sound itself, but is a cockpit of the instrument. The stop tabs control which voices you want to hear. The keyboards control different sets of pipes. They are referred to as the swell and grate. The pistons enable quick changes of sound called registration, and the pedals are played with the pads. The pipes for the top keyboard, swell, are in the large black boxes with the movable shutters to control the volume. The pipes for the lower keyboard, the grate, and the pedal are out front and play at fixed volumes. Your program has a listing of stops that you may want to refer to during our demonstration. The names may seem a little odd. Some are English, but a few are French and German, which is part of the uh, tradition of pipe organs. Pipes range in length from 16 feet to the shortest pipe with the speaking length of about half an inch. An important part of the organ is hidden away under the pipes. The blower room houses a large fan to supply air to make the pipe speak. The wind lines and regulators route the air to where it is needed. There are four families of sound for pipe organs. Diapason or principal stops are traditionally what your mind hears when someone says pipe organ. Only the, the, about the only thing a piano has in common with an organ is the keyboard layout. A significant difference is the sustained pedal of a piano enables a played string to continue to vibrate. An organ sounds only when the key is depressed. The equal pitch to a piano is listed as an eight foot stop. Mitsumi is going to play one note and add the four foot, an octave higher, a two foot octave higher again, and add the mixture stop, which plays several notes for brilliance. The principal chorus is the foundation for him singing. sound and somewhat imitate their namesake. The wooden pipes you see in the front are the Holtz flute, which has a little puff of air when the pipe first sounds. It's called a chiff. On the grate, there's a family of flutes labeled quintida at eight foot, four, and 16 foot pitch, an octave lower. These are the large metal pipes with the red felt caps in front. On the swell keyboard, there are several flutes at different pitch which can serve as solo sounds or play together quietly. This is a flute chorus of Gedeckt, Rohr flute, and Wald flute. Now strings are a quiet and thinner sound. On the swell is a gems horn, which is a tapered pipe at the back of the swell box in the picture. Its partner is a Gimshorn Celeste, located in the opposite swell box, which is tuned slightly sharp and gives a slight vibrato to the sound. Reeds are show-offs. 
With the bright sound, unlike flue pipes, reeds make sound by air passing over a brass reed with the vibration being amplified by the resonating pipe. On the swell is the French named oboe at eight foot and its partner, the bassoon at 16 foot pitch. The oboe alone makes a lovely solo voice. the great, the brightest sound is the trumpet. Now the pedal shares some of its sounds with the great and the oboe from the swell. Its foundational sound comes from the large wooden pipes on each side that are labeled, labeled as supas. A bright reed in the pedal is fasauna, German for trombone, and they are the 16 foot tall pipes that stretch from floor to ceiling against the back wall. While the pipes are wind driven, there's a lot of electronics to control everything. There's actually a computer that routes electric signals to the pipes and wind chest. It enables stop combinations for different organists and even lets them record performances. The many buttons of the combination action enable quick sound changes either by finger or foot. And there is one button that can, be, can instantly give full organ, a single touch to pull out all the stops. I hope you found our demonstration informative. I want to thank Matsumi for her assistance. And I again want to thank you, uh, our donors, and you for joining us today.
Emma, and I first came here to St. Matthews in January 2012 um, when I moved from Kansas to Arizona. And it's such a privilege and honor to be back here with you this weekend. Um, it really feels like coming home to my St. Matthews family. Um, and really, it's a joy for me to see so many old friends and to make new ones here this weekend as well. Um, I'm going to play first for you a piece called El Flautista Alegre, or The Happy Flautist, by a contemporary composer in Mexico, Ramon Noble. Um, this is written in a, in a Baroque style, but with some contemporary harmonies underneath, and it takes advantage of the flute stops on this organ that Claude Matsumi demonstrated for us earlier. So first you'll hear eight and two foot flutes on the swell, and then you'll hear that eight foot flute with the chip on the grate, and then we'll go back to the swell flutes for the end. Um, it's a really delightful piece, so I hope you enjoy The Happy Flautist by Ramon Noble.
eventually concludes with nothing. Because if you live as a precious creature, it's a precious place that we live on, and it's very meaningful for me to write a piece that evokes deep earth. So I hope you enjoy it.
Next, I'm going to play um, a movement from a suite called Suite Gothique by a French composer, Léon Guelman, and it's the third movement called Prière à Notre Dame, Prayer to Our Lady, um, and it starts on the beautiful string and strings the last on the swell division of the organ, and then you'll hear those combined with the flute stop on the grate um, uh, to conclude the work with a final solo on, on the grate flute um, at the very end. So I hope you enjoy Prière à Notre Dame by Léon Guelman.
So the next work is an epilogue for solo pedal by another French composer, Jean Langlais. Um, it, it's, in, it's in minor and it's a bit more dramatic. Um, so think back a couple weeks to Halloween <laughs> with your Toccata and Fugue in D minor, that kind of feel. Um, and it, it opens with um, some really dramatic stuff in the pedal and then the middle section um, is really interesting because it's taken um, from a Baroque composer, um, a Baroque Italian composer named Frescobaldi, um, from a collection that he wrote called Fiora Musicali, or Musical Flowers, kind of tying back into the creation theme. Um, and Langlais quotes directly from Frescobaldi, um, which is written originally for the hands, right? And then Langlais puts it all in the pedal. Um, so there are lots, lots of notes in the pedal. Um, if you want a better, better view of the pedal board, feel free to, to relocate if you need to. Um, it's a pretty cool piece, and then um, the hands do come in for the last few measures um, on virtually full organ. Um, so I hope you enjoy Langlais' epilogue for pedal solo.
Thank you. 